Now, here are some things that I suggest that you begin to look at working on to develop your character. Some things that will give you some personal strength. Webster says character building activities. He says character, the pattern of behavior or personality found in an individual or group. Moral strength, self-discipline, fortitude. That's what's going to be required in order to begin to manifest your greatness. Now, looking at yourself, one of the things I'm suggesting you look at, what is it that you need to be in the process of doing more of or less of? Like being more direct. So I used to have a problem of not telling people what I actually thought because I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Saying no without feeling guilty. More focused. So I used to be the jack of all trades and master of none. Used to do a lot of things. One year I decided to do one thing well. I looked at all of my talents and I decided the strongest one, my ability as a speaker, that's the one I'm going to focus on. But I'm capable of doing a lot of other things. But only when I decided to focus that I begin to reap the rewards of my talent. And then after you do that, you can begin to expand and use the other talents that you have. Deciding to keep your word. If you just decide, I'm going to keep my word. If I say something, I'm going to do it regardless. Being more considerate. More trusting more discipline, being less fearful, being more adventurous. Find something that you can look at your life that you say, hey, I know I've got a problem in this area, being late, I need to take care of that. Procrastinating, I need to deal with that. Not taking care of business, being seriously not serious. Creating an imbalance in my life where I'm spending more time looking at television or having social fun and not spending enough time working on me. See, most people, ladies and gentlemen, spend more time working on their jobs than they spend working on themselves. They work harder on their jobs than they work on themselves. And whatever we achieve in life, whatever we create, whatever we're able to manifest comes out of the human mind. Now, I want you to think about five things that if you had the courage to do them, it will give you a feeling of satisfaction and self-respect. Think of five things that if you had the courage to do those things, you would feel a tremendous feeling of satisfaction within and self-respect. Take the time to write those things down, whatever they might be to you. It might be in your personal life. It might be in your your friendships, your family relationships, might be in your business. I was negotiating with a friend of mine that I admire a great deal. And this person went back on their agreement. And I did not challenge them on it. Number one, because of my admiration for her. Number two, because I really wanted the business. And I think she sensed that. So I didn't want to seem too picky and I was nervous about it. And I was cowardly because I should have said, listen, that's not what we agreed to. I should have called her on that. But I didn't want to look bad or to appear to be negative or risk losing the business. Look at five things that if you had the courage to do those things, that you would do those things. A lot of people say, well, I've been like this all my life. I just can't change. This is the way I am. I want to tell you that we're going to walk you through these nine management disciplines in depth and show you how to really bring them to life in your business so you get real measurable growth, real top line growth that's consistent as a system in your business. But everything is couched still within creating breakthroughs with your people. A system is only as strong as its leader. As I've already said, the chokehold on the progress in any company is always either the psychology or the skills of the leader. And I want to just point out before we begin, if you want to create a breakthrough, a breakthrough is that moment in time where what was impossible suddenly becomes possible and people do it. They actually follow through. They don't just think about it. Breakthroughs I found in my life, really as I work with business people around the world, I've seen that there are three areas that breakthroughs happen. You can create huge change by getting a new strategy. In other words, you find a better system, a better way, you put that strategy in place, sometimes you can compress decades into days. You can do in weeks or months or a year what you might have thought would take multiple years. 
The right strategy can really cut through all the waste, and that's really what technology is. But sometimes people have the strategy. They know what to do. They know the breakthrough. They know what can make this all happen, but they don't do anything with it. And they don't do it with it, they don't follow through. It's like the typical example, most Americans today are overweight, the majority. Three out of every four men, and a third of our population, more than a third, 38%, are obese today. That means they're 30 pounds overweight or more. Why? Is it because the strategies of how to be fit, strong, or healthy are so complex? Or they're so expensive, only the 1% can afford them? Or they're hidden and you just have to work your guts out for years to find them? The strategies are everywhere, aren't they? I mean, there's somebody around the corner that'll come work you out, or there's a club, God forbid you were to walk to it, you could drive to within five or 10 miles for most people. I mean, you could download all the answers onto your iPad or your iPhone, God forbid you'd actually do any walking, get those answers again. The answers, the strategies are everywhere. The problem is we don't use strategies if we don't deal with our limiting stories. A story is just a set of beliefs that we tell ourselves over and over again until it connects into a story. You know, somebody once said, if you tell a lie big enough, loud enough, and long enough, sooner or later people believe you. That was Hitler. Well, we're Hitler in our own minds very often, and sometimes the salespeople you're managing are Hitler to themselves. They might start to hear stories about the product of your company, or a competitor has some advantage, or something about the economy. And there may be some truth to the story, but it's not the whole story. And they make it the whole story. They grab a hold of it as the reason why they aren't doing what they should be doing or why the results aren't as high as they need them to be. There's always a look, we're all afraid of failing. It's in the nature of human beings. So we look for a reason that's not our fault, something we can point to outside of ourselves. And sales leaders and sales managers do this as well, as you well know, it's part of human nature. So becoming aware of your own limited story, you can't help someone else change their story about the company if you're buying in it to yourself. And sometimes when things are overwhelming, when an economy takes a hit, when all of a sudden competition comes out with a product, sometimes we generalize everything. We give them the advantage in everywhere and we forget the advantages we have personally. So as the leader, besides coming up with the strategies that work, you and I have to figure out what's the story that we can own in ourselves and that we can deliver to our teams. And you can almost always hear it or see it or perceive it in your team when it's happening. But what do you do to break that story? What do you do to shift them? That's what every leader has to look at. And by the way, if you shift that story, you're not gonna do it unless you shift the third element. And the third element's the simplest one, but it's the most powerful one moment to moment. And that is your state. As a leader, before you go and do any of this stuff, your state, your level of certainty, your level of passion, your level of excitement, your level of energy, your level of ownership of what you're gonna to talk to somebody about is the most powerful thing that's gonna affect them. Listen, we all know in human communication, words are 7%. That's all the research has said, what the words you use. Now certain words can ignite people, don't get me wrong, but words are the smallest part. What affects us more is voice qualities tone, tonality, tempo, volume, all of these things shift us even more. Studies show about 38%. But your body, your body is 55%, your gestures, your facial expressions. And I don't mean manipulating these in some fake way. I'm talking about when you get into a peak state, you get into a rant, you get into something you're excited about. I don't have some script right here to talk with you. I'm in state with you. I'm thinking about how to serve you right now. And I know there's certain things I've talked about that are important. And I'm gonna come deliver them. If I was saying here now, point number one is this and point number two is this. And here's the third thing. You're gonna turn this thing off in a moment. You can read that damn stuff in a book. What we're looking from each other is an exchange. Listen, what makes somebody, you know, like Mark Benioff, be able to do what he does? You know, to be able to take this company from nothing to four billion in, you know, 13 years. This man has had a story. He believed in the story of what's possible with a cloud. He immersed himself. He did the preparation. So he had not only a strategy, but he prepared his mind and body for what it is he really believed could make a difference. And then he got on fire with that passion and went around the country telling that story again and again and again. And he continues to do it, growing his company geometrically. It, different style, but certainly Steve Jobs did the same thing. Who's better at telling a story, or was, I should say, than Steve Jobs? I mean, pretty extraordinary. He could sell ice to Eskimos. He'd come out and say, we have what we believe is the greatest breakthrough in the history of the world. It's not exact language, but you know, it's a miracle. You know, and, he, and people would buy it because he owned it. He believed it inside of himself and he brought a state to the table. I mean, who do you want to be around? Somebody comes in and says, all right, guys, let's, let's go through the, the update. <sighs> Tell me what your numbers are, you know? 
That person, and I'm exaggerating only slightly, unfortunately, from some things I've seen in large corporations, that person, I don't care what system you put in place, I don't care what nine disciplines, I don't care what strategies you go in, their story and state is the chokehold on the growth of that business. So our job, if you and I are gonna really make, make, maximize what we're here to do, is to make sure we have all three of these, the right strategies, the best we can find, a story that we own that's real and authentic, but that we own, that's inside of us, and that we can translate to other people, but also the state to make that happen. You must have the discipline to act. Now here's what's important about discipline. One discipline affects another discipline. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Don't be naive and say this doesn't matter. Of course it matters. It all matters. Some things may matter more than others, but everything matters. If you'd rather sleep in than go for a walk around the neighborhood, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather spend your money instead of saving it, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather put off a letter to an old friend instead of corresponding regularly, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather work late every night instead of going home and spending time with your family, pretty soon it will matter. It all matters. Every letdown affects the rest. If you won't walk around the block, you probably won't eat right. And you probably won't buy the books. And you probably won't attend the seminars. And you probably won't spend your money wisely. And after years of this, it all adds up. So the key to reversing this process is to start picking up the disciplines. It does matter. It all matters. Now, here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest. Every new discipline makes a difference. That's why action is so important. The smallest action, the least action, the action that you won't think will matter. It all matters. Take it. Because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return, you'll find inspiration to do the next one and the next one and the next one. If you start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to start eating right. You start eating right, it'll inspire you to get a book. You get a book and it'll inspire you to get a journal. You get a journal and it'll inspire you to develop some skills. Disciplines affect each other. Lack affects the rest of your life. The key is to diminish the lack. One of our greatest temptations is to just ease up a bit. To do just a little bit less than you're capable of. To take a little break. Somebody says, it'll just affect my sales. No, it'll affect your consciousness. It'll affect your philosophies. It'll affect your home life. It'll affect everything. No, you can't ease up a bit. That's what vacations are for. When you're at work, work. When you're on vacation, rest. Wherever you are, be there. If you think about vacation when you're at work, you'll surely think about work when you're on vacation. You'll just mess it all up. So be disciplined. Get involved. Do all that it takes to get the job done. Get your health back. Get your bank account where it's supposed to be. Get your family in order. Get disciplined, be disciplined every day. When you set up the disciplines that give your life structure, Miracles can happen. Multiply. And I'm telling you, anybody who wants to make a drastic change in their income can do it. I was broke at age 25 and a millionaire at age 31. Everything around me was the same. I changed. I refined my philosophy. I read the books. I took the classes. Started looking at life a little differently. I'm telling you, it works.